success is boring. Success is boring. Hi there, I'm Greg, and welcome to the Questing Chiropractor podcast, where we help you to find the mix and the beautiful blend between success and fulfillment in your practice life so you can do what makes your heart sing. Be in a structure that allows your flow, change the world one person at a time, and enjoy the profits from that. And today's a slightly different episode. It's a solo episode where we're going to delve into the reason why success is boring. We're going to talk about the difference between speed and velocity. We're going to drill down to your vision, your purpose, your outcomes, your goals, your tactics, and maybe challenge you a little bit in figuring out why the next tactic you want to chase is not the right one for you. Why converting? or closing in a talk is maybe not the best thing to be doing for you in your practice. So listen out for this episode, be challenged, and have fun. Welcome to the Questing Chiropractor podcast. We help you grow as visionary, vital, and capable chiropractors who are always on. We do things differently as we help to elegantly awaken your innate wisdom within. We help you create robust, predictable, and trustworthy practices that serve oceans of people and yet still have free time for yourselves and your families. We use neuroscience to deliver better business results so that you can get greater, deeper, and more effective impact in more ways. We are Questing Chiropractors, and this is our story. One of the biggest things that gets in our way behind the success of our practice life. And at Quest, we talk about the blend of success and fulfillment. Of success, being able to tick box things that come in and measure in numbers and, and get that, that, that revenue coming in or get the next project done. The thing that corporate world thinks of as the be all and the end all, the success. Now, those are important. Those metrics are, are important. We want those successes. We also want fulfillment. And so fulfillment being, it means being on purpose, being in alignment with our vision and our purpose, that which makes our heart sing. And when we have success and fulfillment together, then we have an enriching practice life. And one of the biggest things that gets in the way of an enriching practice life is the difference between speed and velocity. So very often we're driven to speed. We want to get things done. We want to be busy. And we probably see this in our practice all the time when we talk to our practice members that they're busy. The overcommitted mum that has so many things on for so many kids and they're all overcommitted by so many extramural activities in the school and uh, getting the exams done and getting the ballet dancing and taking the kids to piano and might be the dad doing that as well. Or we find people that are in a business and they just find that they're having to work extra hours and extra hours and they're having to do more and do more. But when we ask them whether they feel fulfilled, whether they're actually moving anywhere, they don't know because all they're doing is going with speed. They're executing with speed, which can be useful. But if we don't have any direction, we might just be going in a circle. And you can go very quickly going in a circle, but that doesn't mean you're actually going in an intended direction. And so the key with that then comes to intent. And if we have an intended direction, we might move slowly, but now we have velocity. We have a vector. That means we have movement in a direction. If we've done any kind of strategic look, we're moving in a direction that we might want to go in. So I ask you the question, are you moving with speed or are you moving with velocity? And very often, speed can be exciting. Speed is a drug. You get your dopamine hit from speed and getting the next thing and going to the next course and listening to the next speaker and getting the next thing. And very often, we're accumulating tactics and we don't know whether they're taking us anywhere. Where velocity is something that can take us in the intended direction if we've done any work around our intent and our purpose that we want to fulfill. So that's why Quest, we hold that so important. And for our Questers out there, our purpose is so, so important. Our vision derived to our purpose, derived down to our outcomes, derived to our goals. And then we get to the next steps and the tactics, but they come a ways down. But often in the world, we get sold tactics. A painkiller is a tactic. Another weight loss program is a tactic. But whether it's right for your 
vision, your purpose, your intended outcomes? Well, that's a really big question because if it's not, you're executing with speed, but you ain't going nowhere. And again, speed is addictive. A lot of what's being sold to you to help you in your practice life is built on speed, another tactic, another closing thing, another conversion thing. How to go out and find 15 new people, a new ad thing. Those might be useful, but they might not. But they're tactics. Are they your tactics or are they somebody else's tactics? Because if they're somebody else's tactics, they might work for a short term. But do they actually shift the needle in the direction of your practice success? So I ask you to think about that difference between your speed in which you're doing things and velocity. That's why success can be boring. Because if you have your vision, your purpose, your outcomes, from which you can derive your goals, and from your goals you can find out what the next step is, oftentimes that next step is a boring step. But it's connected to your exciting purpose, your vision. That is endlessly exciting and inspiring. And if we're not living from our inspiration, then we're going to require motivation. One is inside out. Inspiration is inside out. Inspire the spirit within. Motivation is an external factor. Motivation is like a shower. You need it every day when you're lacking inspiration, when you're not connected to inspiration. And if you're needing to be motivated by a speaker on stage, if you're needing to be motivated to buy something, if you're needing to be motivated to click on the next link, to buy the next thing, to find the next closing a tactic that's available for you or the next conversion process that's available for you or here is the script that you can follow word for word and if you follow my script then you'll be able to convert new people if you're doing that you're not doing vision you're doing somebody else's tactic it might work for a short period of time but it comes at a cost it comes at the cost of your unique vision and your unexpressed creativity is not benign when you're not expressing your vision that energy comes out sideways in destructive and contradictory ways. That's when you're putting the handbrake on and at the same time you try to press the accelerator with these new tactics and you don't know why you're not going in the direction you want to. And the reason why you're not going in the direction you want to is you're not going in your direction, you're going in somebody else's direction. But not just one person, you're probably taking from a few people, which means you're probably going around in a circle, which means you're doing speed. You're doing speed, you're not doing velocity. Velocity means you have a vector. It means you have an intended direction. It means you have an intent. And I know I've said this a few times already in this episode, but your intent, your vision, your purpose is the thing that changes everything. And that's why at Quest, it's at the center point of what we do. We help you get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer on your vision, on your purpose, on your outcomes, which you can define your goals. And from there, you can do tactics. And those tactics... Just what is the next thing that's moving me in the direction of my goals that take me towards my outcomes, that takes me towards my purpose and my vision? So I want to really give a little bit of a warning here on shiny object syndrome. And so often because we are chiropractors, we play in the world of hope and optimism when we're working with the people we work with and we've been called to the chiropractic profession for a reason. It means we are excited in novelty and newness and possibility. And that means that we're sometimes easily distracted, but it also means that there's marketers out there that are, that are looking for our distraction and looking to take over our distraction. So if you're ever looking at whether to do the next shiny object syndrome, how do you know whether it's shiny object, object syndrome? How do you know whether it's an opportunity or a distraction? How do you know whether it's an opportunity or a distraction? That's a really key question to ask yourself. And one of the ways you know this is, does this align with my vision? And if it's about getting new people through your door, that doesn't mean it aligns with your vision. Is that offer congruent with what your practice statement of purpose is about? Is it aligned with your tactics that of what's necessary right now? If on average, you're only seeing people for a couple of visits at a time before they go away, sure, you need new people to keep the doors open, but do you need another new person strategy? Or do you need to connect with your purpose of what's really behind your chiropractic vision about helping people to live a fuller life and if we wanted to help people to live a fuller life then it makes sense that they'll have more care with us and if it makes sense that they'll have more care with us and it makes sense that we want to educate and show them a way that this is possible in congruent ethical ways and if that's what we're looking to do then maybe it doesn't make sense to get the next new person strategy maybe it makes sense 
to sit down with a mentor or a coach or a friend or a blank page and figure out what is my vision or my purpose or my intended outcomes. Because those will then be your compass. And with your compass, you can better navigate and find out whether what you're doing and what you're about to do is part of a distraction or is it part of an opportunity that aligns with your vision? And if it is, then jump in, then say yes, do what it takes to make that happen. But if it doesn't, it's hell no. Because every distraction from your values is only fulfilling somebody else's values. And when you live a life by somebody else's values, somebody else's vision, your creativity, your essence is not expressed. When your, ex ex when your essence is not expressed. And when your essence is not expressed, well, then we're living in dangerous times. Because when your essence, your vision, your uniqueness is not being expressed through you, it will be expressed from you in a way to bring you back to your essence. But that's usually where, where symptoms and so-called disease comes from. So we come back to this question of what is your intent in your practice life? What is your dream? Can we reconnect with that space? As I'm working with clients when we do coaching, I talk about what makes your heart sing. And this is the essence of what makes your heart sing. And when we know this, then we know we can move forward with inspiration. Then we can wake up inspired in the morning. And yes, some days are going to be tougher than others. And not every day is a nice daydream. But the challenging things are fulfilling because we know it's a worthwhile challenge. We know it's worth putting my life effort into this challenge. Because this is helping me to grow into my fullest potential to fulfill my purpose. So I'll ask you again. Are you moving with speed or are you moving with velocity? Is this new shiny object a tactic, a distraction in the way? Or does it align with where you're meant to be going? So if we are working towards some kind of purpose and we have developed some kind of strategy, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if we are working to that purpose through a strategy and we have some tactics lined up, why is it that we sometimes don't take action? Why is it sometimes that we procrastinate? Pro means for, to, uh, crass means tomorrow, pro crass, for tomorrow. Why do we put things off for tomorrow that could be done today? Why don't we take action on things? And it's a very common thing with the chiropractic practices. I'm, I'm, I've been uh, known to be a great procrastinator from time. And there are some times where procrastination is useful. Sometimes it makes you step back and ask, is this right for me? Am I on track? Am I on purpose? And, and if that is true and you are on purpose and you're still hitting some sense of procrastination, then what you're often being called to is you've been called to the next level of growth. You've been called to rise up and take action on a slightly greater level, maybe even a majorly greater level than you've taken before. And that can be scary. And that little resistance that you feel, that you feel towards filling that next gap, that next level, is there to test you. That resistance is there to test whether this is really for you. And if it is, if you can connect to the purpose behind the next big step, the next way you're going to grow your practice, bringing on the next associate, bringing x-ray equipment in, um, changing the layout of your practice, firing the next person, hiring the next person, moving on to a new practice, moving into a new practice, whatever that next step is for you, if this is aligning with your purpose and you can feel an inspirational connection from that, then Dig into that inspiration and allow the inspiration to carry you over that, that threshold of resistance that you feel. And when we're connected to that inspiration, the next step to do is to take that, that project that we want to take on and to chunk it down into small enough steps. So we're breaking up the big thing into a whole series of small things. Neurologically, it's called chunking. It's the reason why you can remember a long phone number is because we chunk things down. The reason why you remember one thing in relation to another thing is because you take create two chunks and put them together. I met a guy called James and he had blue glasses. And what I do is I chunk the blue glasses and James together. So it means I remember James, James, chunk, blue glasses, chunk. I might even think of another person where called James and I might think of something interesting about the blue glasses and that becomes chunk. So these are memory or cognitive chunks that we neurologically use to be able to move through the world because the world is really big and really complex. And our neurology is really good at taking things down into chunks. So one of the big reasons why we don't take things forward if we're hitting procrastination, if we're hitting these limits, is because either it isn't really, really clearly connected to our purpose, or we're not really, really clearly um, focused on what the next step 
is. So be able to take it from the purpose. What we've done is we take it from your purpose or your vision to your outcomes. What is the outcome you're looking for? An outcome is something that you move towards, but you never quite fulfill. So you could say a successful practice. A, an associate-driven practice would be an outcome we move for. Um, a referral-driven practice. So then you chunk that down into goals. Now, goals now become something you can actually me measure and check off and something that's, that's completely within your, um, your realm of influence, your sphere of influence, where maybe an outcome isn't. Outcomes can sometimes have a fuzzy timeline, but goals can have a definite timeline. So say we wanted a referral-driven practice. Well, we would come down and look at our stats and say, how many people do we have in our practice that come from referrals? And whatever that stat is, well, let's raise that by 10 20%, and you can put a timeline on that. That's a goal. But saying that a referral-driven practice, that's an outcome. Okay, so we get the difference between outcomes and goals. We're chunking down from vision to purpose to outcome to goal. And sometimes the goals themselves aren't chunked down enough. Great, I need to um, have 10% more people coming from referrals. Well, how do you do that? What is the, what is the next chunk from that? What is the next step from that? Is it improving your table talk? And what it is improving your table talk? And what are you going to improve and how are you going to do that? Those are the steps. Is it, I need some training in better table talk? Great. Well, your first step is to go and find the training. That would be a step. Now you can take a step towards this bigger purpose, this bigger vision, because you've got one step. But if all you said was raising it by 10%, but you don't know really how to do that, and you've got a couple of clear, vague-ish ideas, well, you're not going to get that done. That's going to lead to a feeling of procrastination. You're going to feel stuck because you haven't chunked it down enough to a next viable step. And the great thing is you don't need to know every step along the path. You just need to know the next viable step. And the next viable step might be ask for help. Very often, it ask for help. It's, I don't know what the next step is. Great. Who can I ask? Do I have a coach or a mentor? Do I have a community? Do I have a colleague? Do I have a friend? Do I have somebody who I can ask? And the mantra behind that is you're asking and you're actually changing the question, not from how, you change the question to who. You're going to who, not how. And so often when we get stuck, we get stuck on how when the most useful question to ask is who. If I don't know who to do, how to do this, somebody does. There is a who who knows how to do the thing I'm looking for and might be able to do it for me. So when you're getting really stuck, ask who. And in your community, they might be able to help you to chunk it down. You might have a mentor or a coach you can jump on a call with and go, my intention is to do this based on this vision. And I'm stuck at this point. Great. They can then help you to chunk that down into smaller and smaller pieces until you can take the next step or somebody that you outsource this and delegate this to can take the next step for you. So that's one of the big reasons, or that's the second of the two big reasons. The one big reason is because it's not clearly attached to your original vision that really powers you, your source from within, your inspiration. If it's not attached to that, then it's going to be really hard to take consistent action on it. And if that is clearly attached, but it's not broken down into a small enough piece, it's going to be hard to take the next step. Those two connections are vitally important towards living your practice life of, the, of your dreams. And over and over and over again and helping so many chiropractors, helping myself and helping others along this path, success is often boring. It's not as exciting as the next offer that comes across your newsfeed or into your email inbox or your friend tells you about. It's not as exciting as the next seminar. Now, I'm not saying don't go to the seminars, please do, but go to them with a the discerning eye and ear and mind and heart and know whether these things are on purpose for you. Do they fit within your practice vision? Maybe parts of them do, maybe parts of them don't. But in this world of your unique process, you don't need to know a word for word exact script. We would maybe suggest that there's a neurologically driven flow that's useful to follow. So you know some of the milestones, say in a visit one, that are really useful. And there are useful milestones to learn along the way, absolutely. But if you're getting taught exactly what to say and exactly how to say it, I would suggest you're living somebody else's vision, somebody else's dream. You might get short-term rewards from that and results from that, but you're not empowered. You've been given a fish. You haven't even been taught to fish. And maybe you don't even want fish. Maybe you want something else.
So we round back all the way back to what is the intention? What is the intent? And it's going to come back once again. I've said it so many times in this, uh, this, this rant, if you want, this episode is what is your clear, unique vision? And that can sound scary. And if you don't have that clearly defined, that's okay. A word here, maybe a vision board has it because it's down in pictures. It's a very visual thing. Maybe it's a phrase. Maybe it's a, a sentence from a book. Maybe it's a little bit from a poem. Whatever it is, start taking these things and putting them together because that is your soul calling you and recognizing things in the outside world that matches this internal story, this internal message that you have because you all have a message. We all have a message. And when we can start cobbling together what this vision might be, then we can bring it down into the purpose of how this is expressed through our practice. And from that, we can then derive what outcomes we're looking for. And from that, we can derive what our goals are. From that, we can derive what the next tactic is. But the strategy comes from the outcomes to the goals. So be a strategic chiropractor that is on purpose, not a tactic-driven chiropractor that just goes from tactic to tactic to tactic and ends up being very worn out. Even though your numbers might be high, you're not having much fun. And maybe your numbers aren't high because you've got your foot on the accelerator and the brake at the same time. So my call to you in this rant is be a strategically guided chiropractor, guided by your vision. And it's an inside-out process. We preach inside-out all day long in our practices. But are you living your practice life inside-out? Or are you living your practice life? outside in. 